สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today we're going to do something very exciting and different. Now, if you've ever had sago desserts before, did you know that you've been eating fake sago this whole time? Let me back up a bit. So you've ever heard of or had sago desserts? Maybe a sago mango pudding or coconut sago or maybe sago in bubble tea. You probably know that those little beads are actually made from tapioca pearls, like these. But if they are made from tapioca, then why are the desserts called sago? Well, that is because the tapioca pearls were made to be an imitation of real sago pearls made from a plant actually called the sago palm. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are the elusive. Real sago pearls that I just got my hands on. The problem with these is true sago is extremely labor-intensive to make. It takes the plant at least 10 years to reach the right maturity, and then the harvesting and the making is very labor-intensive. So over the years, people have started using tapioca pearls, which is much easier to work with, and the real ones have been forgotten for a long time. Until recently, when they started to make a bit of a comeback in Thailand, and that's why my friend got a hold of some and then shipped me some straight from Thailand. I have not yet tried these. I am actually going to try these for the first time with you, so we can go through this experience together. And I'm going to compare it side by side against tapioca pearls to see whether these are actually worth the hype or whether the tapioca pearls are. Perfectly fine substitute, and there's no need for us to find anything different. And I'm just going to make two basic puddings, which is what we most commonly use these pearls for. And then just give them a taste, and we'll see what we find out. So while my water is coming to a boil, let's take a look at the physical appearances. So this is tapioca pearls. We've all seen it. It's pure white, and look how evenly sized they are. This is. An industrial product, obviously, a lot of machines probably involved in making these, and sometimes they also come in rainbow colors. Yeah, just food coloring. The sago pearls, on the other hand, these are still to this day being made in like rural villages and people's homes, and you can see that it's a very different looking product. The beads are very uneven, and this is something I'm a little concerned about: how much dust. I think for sort of the higher end sago pearls, they sift out this dust, or maybe it'll just thicken our pudding, and that's the whole point. I'm not entirely sure, but look how uneven they are. So I'm gonna just not mess with it; use it as is. So the process of cooking these are actually pretty similar. You start out with boiling water. Then you add the pearls, and then you stir until they are translucent, but still have tiny little bits of white in the center. Add sugar to taste, and then at this point, you can also add things like corn or young coconut meat or taro or any other add-ins that you want. But to keep it clean for a comparison, I'm not going to add anything. So. Uh, I'm changing my mind a bit. There's so much dust in here, and I, I'm wondering if that's also from the shipping. So I'm just gonna sift. I, I want to eliminate variables basically to make the two as similar as possible. Okay, we still have some small pieces, but that's okay. We just don't have like actual flour. Ooh. Ooh! Right away, it gelled up really quickly. I think because of all those fine particles. Looks like it needs just a touch more water, but it cooked so fast, almost instantly. According to my research, you do not want to cook away all of the white centers, otherwise it just kind of turned to mush. I think I'm gonna kill the heat. Oh, it smells different. It's it has a smell, so familiar. It smells like it smells like a root vegetable. Oh, sugar. It's a little bit clumpy, which I think speaks to perhaps my inexperience working with this product. I probably need it to really stir. As I add it, because because of how fast they 
clumped up together, which does not happen with regular tapioca. All right. So I'm going to taste this in two states, one just straight up like this, and then the other with a little bit of salted coconut milk, which is how this would normally be served. But first impression, the smell, tapioca pearls have zero smell, nothing, none at all. But as soon as these hit the boiling water, I smelled something and it was so familiar and I was like, God, it smells like a root vegetables of some sort. And it finally clicked. It smells exactly like taro root. All right, here's the taste test. <laughs> the tapioca pearls, they don't taste of anything. It's a great texture, I love tapioca pearls. But they're sweet and that's all there is to it. Oh, super sticky. I'm so excited. First time. Mmm. Oh, there is definitely flavor. Okay, that is unquestionably, objectively better. The unevenness of the pearls, I like that. There's lots of texture going on. There's some bigger beads, which do not like, it doesn't taste starchy or raw or anything. I think mostly because you just end up swallowing them. You don't actually chew them. But the, the little bits that have sort of dissolved create a really nice mouth feel, like a velvety outside with some bigger bits inside. There is a really, really subtle flavor I don't know how to describe it. It's, it. it's just a more complex tasting dish than this, which to me, I taste that and it's like, that just tastes like sugar. But this, there's like a little bit of sweetness, but there's also just stuff happening in there. Okay. Ooh, I'm excited. So now I'm going to compose the dish with the coconut milk and see as a complete pudding, whether the difference is still quite as stark. It's much better now. I should note that in Thailand, you would never just serve a tapioca pudding without anything else in it. Like there's usually corn or coconut or taro or just something because in and of itself, it's just not much there, right? So it needs a lot of help. But this guy, this doesn't need anything. Like that, I taste that and I feel like it needs something. Whereas this, I feel like I'm satisfied with just the simple one, which is how I've seen them served in Thailand. Um, just a simple pudding with nothing in it. Totally worth the hype. I was pleasantly surprised. I was fully prepared to be disappointed because you know how these things can go. But turns out there is something to the rawness of it. It's all of the essence of the tree minus the fibers is still in here. And that's why the flavor and the color and, and because it's manually turned into beets, we've got all the differences in texture, which turns out to be a good thing. So I hope you find that interesting. Um, I don't know where I can direct you to go buy Rio Sago pearls, but if you're in Thailand, they are now becoming more and more popular. I bet you, you can find it online somewhere if you look hard enough, but um, I will do my best to provide extra resources. And the blog post for this will also have more information about how um, each thing is made and the differences and all that. So make sure you check that out. Thank you as always for watching and a special thanks to our Patreon members who help support the show. If you want to know how to watch my video ad free with bonus content, make sure you check out Patreon. I'll link to that in the description below. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.